Last year, MPs were demanding for medical cover, including providing 10 million inpatient cover per family. 300,000 for patient, 150 for maternity care, 75,000 for dental care. Do you think really we can manage this? Of course, you can interact with us on all our social media platforms as we get to demystify the mystery behind all this. Probably coming back to you, Bona MCA. Yes. When you mentioned about the issue of uh, unemployment, it becomes a hit yes. to young people. Yes. Do you think your county? on a personal level, mm -hmm. has done, what has it done so far for the young people? Uh, very well, we to the mic? yes, <coughs> very well, we are, we are all struggling. Yes. And I can tell you, M is one, mm. there's that goodwill. There's a goodwill to create job opportunities for them. Yes. We've tried our best, but you know, there's that elastic limit. There's, there's where we cannot uh, stretch more. Mm. We have tried to stretch our budget so that we can be able to accommodate our young people. But we cannot get, you know, we cannot, we are now almost, we've, you know, we, are, we have gotten to the uh, uh, optimum. We cannot mm. get any more. But what we are saying is that, and that is the demand by the Council of Governors mm. and also the CAF, the County Assemblies Forum, mm. that if you want to solve some of these challenges that are facing this country, yes. Those who had the, the famous Jeshi <laughs> Tengenu, you know, it is true. Yes. The young people are not happy with the sure, government. Sure. So, mm. like for instance, we have a complex that mm. is being a 26 story building for the National Assembly, mm. the office complex, which is 5.8 billion. Sure. Now, 5.8 billion, if you define 5.8 billion to 290 constituencies, is every constituency 200 million now with 200 million you are able to put up a, a milk factory mm -hmm. like the one in uh, in mcquen yes. we're also doing one of around 150 million uh, in embo now if you look at it the, that complex alone of five five point eight billion is able to have a, a, at least every constituent to have a milk plant of 200 million what does that mean 200 million Co uh, worth uh, industry is able to employ about 100 young people. So if you wow. say 100 young people times 290, mm -hmm. 290 constituencies, you can get it. That is how we are able to solve unemployment, uh, unemployment among the young people. But I want also to challenge mm -hmm. the members of the National Assembly. Yes. When we were in university, I was the university leader in Mo University right. in uh, my time during my time in school. We were able to push for the National Youth Council. And I remember in 20, around 2012, 2011, 2012, we were able to have the National Youth Council in place. We had an act of the National Youth Council Act. And this was the body that was speaking on behalf of the young people. Because if you tell me to speak about young people, mm. I'll speak yes, mm. but I'll still speak on behalf of the old. I'll still speak on behalf of women. Yes. I'll speak beha on behalf of even the middle-aged because I'm elected by all. So, so I will not primarily talk about the young people. I will not be biased. Yes. But when we have a body, mm. we have seen Modiawoli being appointed the other day. Mm -hmm. That is, that, that is, that, that is, you know, that is demeaning the young people. Does mm. it mean we don't have young people who, who are equal to, uh, who are equal to, 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 to yes. such, to such uh, jobs? Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that we need. The, young, the National Youth Council in place so that we can have a body mandated under the Act of Parliament mandated to speak purely on behalf of young people. The moment they killed it, the moment they killed that body, then the youth, the youth of this country has no voice. Njagwe will not speak on behalf of the young people. Mm -hmm. Uh, Babu Awino will not speak on behalf of will only in So let us have that body. And it was there. Mm. It was killed. Let us revive it and have a body that will speak on young people so that Article 55 of the Constitution can be reality in this country. Let me ask you. Yes. You mentioned about youth and politics in, in the universities. Yes. Are you trying to insinuate that we need to bring presidents on board to yes. discussions? Very well. We need them. We need a round table meeting. And, mm. and I don't know where, where our young people went. University, we are very vibrant. We used to get, you know, we had to, we were sitting with great men of this republic. We could push for our agenda, 
But nowadays, it's just a lot of uh, clapping, you know, a lot of merrymaking. Uh, that is not the way to go, and this is where the politicians so, take advantage of young people. Let me that me. just go entertain them. Mm. You know, let them make, uh, make sure there is a bash, you know, a dinner. Make them, you know, churchy, let them laugh, yeah. let them, you know. That is not how you build your future. Yes. Our young people must must now rise up to the occasion mm. and know life is not just about clapping sure. life is not just about drinking life is not just about bash there's much about life getting their equal share in this government so let me get this right yes so your blame is towards the youth for being silent yes yes i'll blame them they are so quiet it's like things are okay things are not you they are clapping anyway you'll find up with they're clapping they must show their dissatisfaction so that their voice can be heard what, what, then do you people, people? what do you suggest my suggest my suggestion yes. is that one let them push the national uh, the national assembly mm -hmm. the, the mps to have a body a national body under the act of parliament called the national youth council that will be a pure voice for the young people us in the na counties personally i'm sponsoring a bill to create the county youth council so that we also have a body at the county level that will speak the voice of the young people so that we can be able to solve issues of young people mm -hmm. at least we can give ourselves five ten years mm. we are able to you know to square this thing once and follow but we cannot assume things are okay the the, the proverbial street you just bury our hand and assume after all what I need is food. Yes, I may need food, but I also want to see young people who are vibrant, who are productive, and who are engaged in a productive activity. Let me, let me probably bring you to board on understanding on this. Uh, I think there was a time, uh, I think one month ago, yes. there was the big constitutional debate at the Funga Manor House. Mm -hmm. uh, it was discussing about the issue of the wage bill. Mm -hmm. And of course, we had quite a significant number of young people attending that yes. constitutional debate. Mm -hmm. And the, the main issue that was really on that, the main thing that, that, that was roaming around mm -hmm. was the issue of the wage bill. and also the youth mm -hmm. unemployment yes so when we are mentioning about uh, young people not really raising their voice because it was quite it was quite a time for young people to express themselves mm -hmm. and they raise their voice out mm -hmm. but do you think the government is really listening to young people you know uh, uh, you don't just raise your voice uh, you know mm -hmm. you can go to street and just raise but but you must have a coordinated way of raising your voice yes you, you must be able to sit to sit with, with your with your representatives, come up with a legislative proposal, mm -hmm. like a bill. This is what we are giving you. This bill speaks about this. It's about the strategy to solve an This is what we need as young people. We want in our boards, let us take, uh, the, take stock. The, the many commissions, how many young people are represented mm -hmm. in those boards? Mm -hmm. How many, how many young people are in various boards in this republic? Because what we are seeing is the recycle. How many young people below 35 years are high, high commissioners, are ambassadors? How many young people are in cabinet? How many young people are in 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 uh, in uh, CCs, in uh, in uh, the committees, mm -hmm. uh, the executive committees in the counties? Mm -hmm. That is a well coordinated voice. Then come up with a write up, come up with a legislative proposal, mm -hmm. and give it as an assignment to MP. Give it as an assignment to MCA that this is the legislative proposal we are giving you. We need it as, uh, as an act. Then uh, then let it pass, let it be approved. Then to the top leaders, to the implementers. This was this bill was enacted. Mm -hmm. Can we see it being being implemented? That is the surest way that mm -hmm. the young people can have their space in this nation. Do you think young people yes. are uninformed about the available opportunities? Mm -hmm. Do you think they are un uninformed? They are not fully informed about the available opportunities. Well, you see, the information is all over. Uh, nobody will inform you about your right. In yes. fact, if I want to <laughs> take advantage of you, I'll make sure you are ignorant. I'll take <laughs> advantage of your ignorance. So uh, don't wait to be told this is your opportunity. Yeah. Article 55 is very clear on the young people, mm. on the role of the state mm. to the young people. Mm. Take advantage of that. Mm. If that is not implemented, there is a court. Just go walk in court. 
and make uh, and the push for implementation of article 55 where the young people must be you know must be appointed in various in various um, uh, various boards and organizations and in various institutions some of us I remember the, the municipal board uh, in Embu, we, we appointed a 24-year-old and it was not easy, we had to push for it because we felt as young young legislators, mm -hmm. as young MCs, we also need to show, that our, uh, to show the youth that we are still doing something and that's what we did. Uh, let's shift gears for just a moment and let's talk about Wambora's unceasing crisis and also his succession. <laughs> yes, yes. Since 2013, yes. he has been with so much of issues, impeachment, you know, from, from the national, from the county assembly, mm -hmm. all the way to the senate. Mm -hmm. Has this really brought down the county? Mm -hmm. uh, very well. At least we are able to solve the issues. Yes. The, uh, the impeachment came, of course, with some of the national leaders and mm -hmm. who wanted to be governors. And okay. um, because when we went for election in 2013, uh, so many never understood what to some thought Senate, uh, the senators thought they were now the superior, but only they to realize mm -hmm. they were inferior. In fact, it's even better to be a member of National Assembly than a senator in terms of power and what to control. Mm -hmm. And the role of the Senate was not, uh, you know, it was not very clear. Mm -hmm. And so when some realized uh, the position of the governor is quite, uh, you know, it is quite, it's a good position. Mm -hmm. And so many uh, didn't now wanted to have it. And so the issues, of course, of impeachment. And again, the role of MC was not very clearly known to some of these governors. And that's why you are seeing a lot of issues also with the new governors. Right. Like you saw in Kerenyaga what is happening. You saw in Raikip, Kukwakimemia, Nyandarwa. It's because some, you also know, you in Kiambu. Because they never... Uh, understood what the role of the of the MC is, and some thought these are just mere councillors. And if the MCs want to bring your government down, they can do it. And you see a politician, if you are ignored, you have to flex your muscles and be recognized you are there. But and so those are some of the issues that also brought about the impeachment. Mm. Uh, at some point, uh, the governor, of course, with his advisors, could not even uh, consult the MCs on various projects and uh, the were issues mm. uh, and but we were able to solve that and mm. the the, the MBU people and uh, give governor Ambora a new term mm. and uh, we are working well uh, i can assure you there's a lot of peace mm -hmm. and we are seeing a lot of development uh, the succession politics uh, our people are very you know well the, they didn't want it but you see they are now all of them they are supporting the incumbent all right because of course they may want his blessings <laughs> they may want his blessings so mm -hmm. we are enjoying a lot of peace and a lot of support mm -hmm. from all quarters mm -hmm. all quarters nobody is pointing a finger mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's not more about wanjiko now it's about uh, how can i be blessed uh, by the incumbent oh. <laughs> so, so that i can capture the position let me let me ask Pisa. has the standoff experienced in your county Yes. Between the executive led by, of course, Governor Mambora mm -hmm. and, and the County National Assembly, has the standoff really brought some hindrances in how the county really functions? Yeah, actually, w most of the counties, as I have said, they are really struggling. Mm. Uh, right now, we have not released our bursaries simply because there's nothing in the national treasury. And we are telling Wanjiku, it's your people, the people that you elected in the National Assembly, the members of parliament, They've been able to take everything. We are not able to offer the best medical services because whatever we are getting is insufficient. There is a lot of there is a lot of demand for the health, mm. but but we are not getting funds. Yes, counties up to you can imagine up to last week that's when they were releasing for some funds. Mm -hmm. So when 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 you take a lot of time to release funds and even close a financial year without releasing what counties budgeted for. The Monainchi is suffering, and that's why you, s you are seeing the push and pull between the Senate, the Council of Governors, yes. and the National Assembly. Because 
how do you dare give counties lesser money mm. than what you gave them last year mm -hmm. when the CLI the commission on revenue allocation mm. uh, proposed an increment because of course the demand mm. the increase in population you want to improve more health facilities yes. so uh, they are more the equipment that they brought to us for the ICU uh, the oncology these are new new department these are the new you know the new investment in the counties so that we are able to fight with this cancer and other diseases so yes. it means you require manpower you require to employ currently we are facing a shortage of medics in our county because of the high demand of the employer for five we, hospitals so we, we, we uh, the counties really require a lot of funds yes. and also to able to get to able to uh, you know to achieve the four uh, the four big agenda we may require more funds uh, to ensure Let people me probably get are getting services right, yeah? yeah your county uh, yes embo county yeah. probably because you're an mc i know you relate to this yeah has been really receiving every 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 financial year an increment probably just to, for the statistics then for clarity mm -hmm. 2012 2013 you received 206 million 2013 2014 by the financial year you received 3.3 .3 billion mm -hmm. 2016 2017 4.6 billion yeah. 2017 2018 4.8 billion mm -hmm. and the latest ending financial year 2018 2020 you received 5.9 billion mm -hmm. it was a, a target rather not a clarity something clear mm -hmm. it was a target mm -hmm. you've been receiving every time it has been an increase an increase an increase mm -hmm. How, how, how do we, how, how, how has this really helped? Because you say that it's not really what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you look at the demands, one, as I've said, the wage bill. Now, we pay nurses, the medics only, we pay them close to 1.6 billion. Now, we have other 1. cash. 1.62 actually billion. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, those are the medics only. Mm -hmm. We have other, other stuff. So, at the end of the day, we are actually paying close to four billion on recurrent. We are left with only a, a, a billion for development. Our people require water. We need to tarmac roads, and we've tried to tarmac major roads. Actually, we are really doing a lot of tarmacking. Uh, we need we need to improve infrastructure. Most of our level four hospitals. By the t you know, I, I just hear people talking about. Uh, taking the, the health to national government. I wonder what they are saying. Some of these hospitals were shells with nothing. They were empty. Mm -hmm. Just building, few buildings. Right now we are trying to improve our level 4 hospitals, mm -hmm. to be needed for force. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are trying to equip them. And f and uh, I was the chairman budget. I'm actually chairing the budget. Yes. Uh, the that, yes. Can we come kindly to the issue of the cost workers? Mm -hmm. It's quite an issue in Embo. Of course, it's not only in Embo. We also mm -hmm. have experienced some Buru County still on the same about the cost workers. But right now, let's talk about Embo County because we're talking about 1.62 billion mm -hmm. and 1.1 billion. Yes. And about the issue of the nurses. Mm -hmm. What is really happening? Well, I don't know about the narrative of ghost workers, but uh, we cannot overlook it. Mm. Uh, what we'll be doing as a county assembly, and that's what we have said, we start, we'll start by the hand count. And as in the Committee of Health, we've said we'll be, able, we'll, we'll be counting, you know, the medics that we have in all facilities, mm. so that we ascertain, uh, and also their, and their salaries, so they are paid, and the total sum because what we want to do we never meant that uh, uh, they are ghost workers but we said we want to justify yes. the 1.62 billion because the salary we are paying we also need to see the fruits uh, we must get the value for money uh, we can't pay 1.6 billion yet we are people are still complaining uh, we were not well served we are still suffering of the acute shortage in our level force mm. and the level five. So we didn't want to, to be assured who is this that we are paying 1.6. Uh, and, uh, and I think that that's not the end. We also want to know the entire, you know, the, the entire number of our staffs mm. so that we are sure these are the people we have. And, and you saw the Uduma number working miracles and the president was able to, to tell this nation how much they have been able to save by unearthing the ghost workers. So you, we've been doing an audit to our payroll. We want to know how many workers we have. And once we do it, then you can invite me and let be me able me to tell you, Thank uh, you very much. if at all we'll get the, the ghost workers. Yes, but let me ask you. Yes. Do you think Embo mm -hmm. has an excessive 
rate of, em, of employment is it over is it really overpowered yes yes mm -hmm. yes the, we have we are, it's a it's a shortage acute one and uh, we have so many young people with good grades uh, with good uh, courses uh, because we have the university with us and uh, our people are taking advantage of it we have several courses and uh, although like uh, the ECD we have so many teachers, mm -hmm. uh, young people who have uh, uh, pursued their careers on, on ECD, unfortunately will be, yes we'll be employing, but you see we have about 384 ECD centers, so we can only employ 384. Mm -hmm. And most of these people are young people, mm -hmm. so once you employ, it means once we have two for PP1 and PP2, yes. we will not employ until now the national attrition and also the you know the and uh, and and other issues so we, we may not really employ a lot so we may not really because we are really much. limited yes yes uh, just, just to bring something clear to make something clear uh, governor wambora mm -hmm. in one of an interview in another media house said that there is for sure he said that mm -hmm. for sure we are still struggling with the issue you know bringing people on board mm -hmm. because he found people already while he was becoming the governor mm -hmm. he already found people already there yeah. with, with the previous government mm -hmm. who were there mm -hmm. and they signed on a contract do you think that has affected the employment mm -hmm. issue yes that has also affected us as a county because we were the end quarters uh, we were the end quarters of the provincial quarter yes. and so most of the uh, staffs were did they a post to the counties with mm. huge high job salary, jo uh, very high job group uh, job groups mm. with very huge salaries and driver being paid eight thousand eight eight thousand per month. So we we hand such, but what we are saying, what we need to do is to utilize them because mm. manpower should not be an issue, yes. should not be a challenge. We should make use of it. So if if you are uh, the second the several in the department like in the department of livestock mm -hmm. in the department of agriculture mm -hmm. then we should take advantage of the staffs that were seconded to us and make sure we make use of them and i think that would be the best the best way so that so that we don't so much complain on the but if they are productive if this these staffs they make our people productive you know if if you are trained on bee farming go train farmers let them start honey, let them start manufacturing honey. You know, if we make sure we make use of those workers, then it means the, the turnover of our economy at the county will be high and will not be struggling. We will be able to get more and set more industrial and factories. Really expound on that, but because of time, let me be straight and ask. Mm -hmm. You have talked about MCAs and of course people knowing their responsibilities as governors and such kind of issue. This is your second term as an MCA. Yes. What have you come to realize about the responsibilities of an MCA? Oh my, you know, I, I, and my advice to those who want to pursue in, in this politics, uh, I want to tell them it's not easy. If at all you really want to serve your people, uh, your responsibility is imbued. In fact, your constitutional mandate will only take around 20 or 30 percent. If you stick to your constitutional mandate, then you will not be able to serve because uh, you are, the constitutional mandate requires an MC to do to carry out the oversight role mm -hmm. over the national government, over the county government. You require the MC to do the presentation. You take uh, you, the issues of your people, the ideas of your people to the assembly, and also register it. Those three. But it is beyond. In fact, you even become a pastor to your ward uh, that you even be requiring to pray for your people. Uh, out of the you be you must be very philanthropic. Uh, sometimes you have people coming to your home, coming to your office with so many challenges, both financial and there is no funds set for that. You must be ready to part with that. Uh, you you may require to you know to console your people. I mean, uh, you you must be ready ready to serve if at all you are interested with this position. And and that's what some of us were able to secure the second term. And again, we are living like people are really stressed. We, our people are really stressed. I don't know why. Uh, we are, our nation is, is struggling. And our people are struggling with something that we really don't know. You know, uncertainties and I don't know. 
Uh, so we must also be able to speak to our people. There's a lot of expectations, a lot of frustrations, a lot of stresses with the people that even if you do this thinking that you didn't be assisting them, you still find there are those issues, you know, uh, cropping issues and people are really very unstable. And uh, uh, so as an MC, if you are not ready to sacrifice, uh, just forget about being an MC. Yes. For 2022, now that you cannot run for MC again, no, the constitution allows me to run for MC. You can run again. This is your second time. This is my second mm -hmm. time. I can run a land, can you run can... a land time, a fourth time. So where where do you stand? There is no limitation for an MC. All right. Because uh, uh, the people back there they think that an MC should go for two terms. Okay. A member of national. I said it's only it's good to clarify to our people that it's only the governor and the president mm -hmm. that have a term that is being limited by the constitution, only mm -hmm. two terms, ten years, then you hand over the mantle. But for other mm -hmm. legislators, you can even do 30 or 50 terms, depending with your people. Mm -hmm. But of course, as for me, if, if you are able to be faithful with the literal, mm -hmm. uh, then you can request for more. If you feel uh, the responsibility of, of the world is too small and you're seeing your people struggling. Mm. I can tell you currently we have an issue that people are really struggling. Mm. The increment on NHIF uh, is an issue, it's a thorn in the flesh of majority of Kenyans that cannot afford, mm. uh, you know, cannot afford to pay 500 per month. Mm. And these are realities. We have people who are living below a dollar a day, mm. still at the poverty line. Mm. And these people are almost 50 percent. Mm. These are the people you are telling them to pay 50,000. And this 500 per month, and yet you are requesting uh, another wife to be to be to be you know to be insured mm. honestly Wait. and at that point yes yes as an mc uh -huh. may have said it very clearly mm. and i wrote to a uh, writing to the clerk of the county assembly if a state officer is being paid an mc being paid hundred thousand and above mm. let us not see a peace slip uh, you know, a, a, a remittance of one one thousand seven hundred. If a member of National Assembly is being a MP is being paid a, more than a million, why is he being? Uh, why you know why is why is he remitting only one thousand seven for insurance? The NHIF let us pay more so that we can be able uh, to supplement for the other the the the, the, the low you know the, the low earning Kenyans, the struggling uh, Kenyans, the hustler nation. So that we can, they can pay at least two hundred and fifty. Yeah. So that all of us we are included in that in in that uh, scheme. But telling them to pay five hundred, yes. yet with one hundred, with one million, you are paying one thousand. So it's very unfair. And these are the areas we want to 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 do once we get to the national. I think we need so to have this some other time, of course. We need to 2022, I will not run for the MC again. Do you not run for MC? No, no, I'll be running for the national assembly. Member of parliament. Member of parliament. So what do you have to say to I think uh, I'm mature enough mm -hmm. and uh, I've learned a lot uh, and I can take them somewhere. Uh, I know how to lobby. Mm -hmm. I know what it takes and yes. I know what being a member of National Assembly means mm -hmm. to the people that you represent. Jin Sinyaga and Mukami Pinata are tuned in. Very and, well, uh, thank you. They're, they're saying it's quite, it's quite an engaging. I want you to give your last remarks to the people of Nyanjas. Yes, but when yes. I want to take this opportunity once to thank the people of Nunyanje Saint Road uh, for giving me now this is my second term. Uh, Just look at this okay, very well. Uh, I don't take it for granted that give me an opportunity to serve them as the MC, and as we've been interacting with them, I'll continue serving them. We've started many things, including. Uh, uh, tamaking of Runyanges and uh, upgrading our town so that uh, we take it from the feeding level to a better town where investors can come. We've started feeding program for ICDs. We have also tried to digitalize our education through providing screens to our ICDs. And also we have tried to improve ICD. So we, we just want to assure them we continue with the good work and uh, let them be hopeful that we, are, we will do great things to them. Thank you very much. All right, many thanks, of course. That has been Honorable Steve Simba, MCA Runyenje Central Ward, and of course the Deputy Speaker of Embu County Assembly. And those are just his sentiments on the current happenings. And just to bring you on board about today's, you can be looking at 
today the senator and the governors, they said they'll go to streets to strike over the county revenue allocation. That's a story we'll be looking at, of course, today. And, of course, I believe that also even the MCA is heading out to the Supreme Court uh, over the case of the county allocation. Yeah, that's right. Many thanks to that. Joy is coming up in just a few.